Hey everyone, thanks again for joining me on Sealed for Good. If you haven't subscribed to this YouTube channel, get on board because we'd love to see you learning more about waterproofing in general. Today I've got Shani Milans, our technical manager, who's joined me on this episode where we're talking about puddle flanges and leak control flanges because this topic comes up daily amongst all our team out in the field, our customers, resellers, builders around the country. And you may recall some years ago I had recorded a video on this channel regarding leak control flanges and how it was done many years ago and how we do it now, yet it's still a discussion point where we don't get it right. Shandy, tell us about what goes wrong with puddle flanges and why is it that we don't understand this? Uh, it seems to be a, a variety of reasons, but the main one, it, it's really just the, the understanding of, of what the detail is in the AS3740, um, the, the standard for internal wet areas, and how they need to be detailed and how they need to be incorporated into the waterproofing system themselves, and it's not a separate item. Um, different trades, different builders have different interpretations of when they need to be used and how they need to be applied. And that's where things can sort of um, go pear-shaped, like, like some of the examples we have here. And you raise AS3740 because we see a lot of attention on membranes with AS4858, AS4654, mm -hmm. yet the 3740 detail for bathrooms, which has been around for a long time, we're still not getting right. So let's run through, because this really is the how not to, but unfortunately this is how we still see it out there in the marketplace and these are replications of photos that we've had brought in and what we've seen out there in the real life situation. So, the obvious on your uh, right there, Shandy? Yeah, well this is um, one of the favourites, um, seems to be one of the favourite methods. Um, usually when you see it being installed like this, it's more than likely it's usually the plumber, unfortunately. Or um, another trade, even yeah, though, or so sometimes or, the, yeah, carpenters the carpenters, or, or that's right, or the, or the general labourer at the builder. And they know that it needs to go in, it needs to be fixed, and that's all they really know that it's there for. So issues with the fixings, if they're using tech screws, and I've seen it like this many times, and they try to cover it up with silicon sealant, and then detailing is it becomes a nightmare, air pockets. Uh, but then the more obvious one is all this sort of mess that they've done with the sealant or sometimes the epoxy adhesive that they used. Um, and you know, we're talking about almost five mil step up there, which is not gonna really be fit for purpose in, in letting that water drain underneath that grate. So, um, so yeah, this is one of the most important details from the, the moment that it's been uh, applied is wrong. Yep. So it doesn't matter how good a membrane system that has been used mm -hmm. in the bathroom, how good a contractor you, the, the builder might engage. If that's attended to like that, don't do it. You shouldn't be doing it because it's just it's not right. Even though it might be a leak control flange, you know, you can put your grate in there. It makes no sense. You have to literally build your membrane up, like Shani said, by more than five mil to even be able to then address that, which no one's gonna do that. Yeah. This one, it's ugly, and it's the, for me, I see it, and it just sort of shouts out that people don't know what a leak control flange is. They, it's, it's a waste outlet that, you know, is more so for a toilet or another wet area outlet, but, um, you know, there's nothing there, okay? Some people might think it's a token approach to what a flange is, but again, Shandy, sealing well, gunk everywhere. Yeah, well, this is this this type of flange here isn't even designed for the purpose of a leak control. It's not a flange. No, nah, so this is, well, technically that's what they call it. It's a flange, but it's just to cover the hole where they've cut out um, the penetration for the plumbing. Um, this is typically what we see a lot of the time in New South Wales. Um, they have the bigger, uh, 100 mil pipe and they detail it this way and then it just becomes a mess of sealant usually polyurethane as well um, which creates issues for the compatibility of, of our water-based liquid membranes but this is um, Australia-wide I, I see this approach yep. a lot you know sometimes even occasionally where you've got wet areas where you've got a, a shower and, a, and an outlet outside and they go and put the puddle flange or the leak control flange inside the shower and then get outside the shower they don't need to have yeah. that and they go and put this in there because and you know yeah. the saving is zero mm -hmm. the time needed is is the same it's just the education the awareness factor and this is where builders if you've got your supervisors out there looking at stuff shouldn't even be calling the next trade in if it's done like that and we'll get into that discussion because it shouldn't be done by anybody but the waterproofer but yeah. we'll come back to that later and, and you bring up a good point with when they install this sort of thing on outside the shower because that's, it is one of the features of 
of the really? leak control flange is that extra support for the pipe work itself. So the, these work for that purpose to secure the pipe in place, mm. but then you don't have that drainage detail. Yep. And if it's not installed flush, then that, that's the other issue. Yeah, so they just sort of shove and wedge yeah. in a, a floor crate. And, and that, that's that miscommunication that I was talking about before. This is my favourite because I see it all the time. Um, and the discussion when I referred back to the original video I had a few years ago, we talked about waterproofing under screeds and AS374 doesn't state that you have to waterproof over a screed but there should always be a, a grade and a fall towards the outlet but what goes wrong with this one Shandy? Because we see this all the time where screeds are laid over the top of the membrane mm. and you can't see the penetration, uh, you can't see the, sorry, the, you can't see the termination of the membrane or if they're going to waterproof over the screed this is the problem area because of the way that they might have beveled out this screed area here to be able to bring their membrane down but they're going to integrate the membrane system onto a PVC flange mm. and try and actually have that as their seal. What, what is the issue that you've seen and where has this failed? Yeah so where it fails is usually at that termination where they try to bring it in they're not getting this the consistent film thickness on this edge here uh, also on the, on the bottom edge as well and then the connection so they're not they don't connecting to the full width of that flange it's only you know and, I, and from memory I think it, it calls for a minimum of 20 25 mil overlap from the flange to the connecting membrane um, and they're not really achieving that when it's set up this way but when, when I see this the most Phil is when the tile or the waterproof is trying to do the right thing and the, the puddle flange being installed by another trade usually the plumber, mm -hmm. um, because for whatever reason, you know, they, they don't feel that's part of their scope. And then they screed on the top to get the fall, usually on a flat fall. Yep. And then they incorporate the waterproofing into the puddle flange this way, but like those, those issues. But, but no waterproofing's been done prior to that screw. No, nah, no waterproofing. So yet. the issue is the first one, sand and cement doesn't bond the plastic. Okay, even if we've got 11 wire in the sand and cement and we use a slurry or we use our OP primer, it will help the adhesion, but you've still got a weak point there. And you that weak point is where if there is a membrane that's continuing from this face down here onto the flange, if you get any thermal movement and uh, you get then water going back underneath that screed, it's in the watering job is com compromised completely. In the most important area, which is where we're coming back to, mm -hmm. this is where the water drains. And there's a, the volume of water here is far greater than any other point in the wood area. Yep. We'll come back to that one after on how to do it properly. And this one, I'm still shocked I see this. <laughs> I used to see this in the two th early 2000s when we were starting to get out around the marketplace and you know there's a pipe that comes through the floor, they cut it down, they think they've done all the right things, they've sealed around it and they just dress their membrane down and then all they can do is shove in a grate but it's not a leak control detail as per AS3740. Simple as that. Yeah, it's it's prone for failure. As neat yeah. as the membrane might be. Yeah. And I'm glad that the contractor chose Group to do that FC <laughs> there. But um, in all seriousness, though, that that is the weak point. Yeah, big time. Because it's just yeah. it isn't a leak control. So whether you've done that on a screed or on a flat area like that, you've literally got no water, no outlet for the water of what the principle of a leak control flange is. And a leak control flange is to enable water that doesn't go, that perhaps sits on the membrane and sits around the pipe to go down into the drainage detail. And if you need the full gamut of those details, go back to my original video, we might put a reference on that uh, to give you a link back on, on seeing that one some years ago, pre before I even got a grip set t-shirt when I did that video. But that one there explains how we did it back in the 90s. This is a detail that just is a dinosaur. Mm -hmm. I mean, just, it's a full sign of me that uh, whoever's even attempted it doesn't know what they're doing. Yeah. All right, wait one second. We're going to come back with some details on how to do it.
So this is how the flanges are supposed to be installed. And what is common here is you'll see they're all rebated in. There's different brands of flanges here. Not that we're promoting any in particular, but we actually explain the fact that it doesn't matter what grade or product you're using, the common thing is here that they're all flush or rebate into the floor, firstly. Secondly, the most important thing here, Shandy, is that this is set up for the waterproofer and it should be done by the waterproofer. I think that you know the common thing that I hear from you and our guys out in the field and, and customers' feedback is that there's this disconnect between application of installing the flange to the waterproof membrane. The waterproofing application is not just about getting your liquid or your sheet out and laying it, it's about preparing and understanding the area first. And if you're the waterproofer giving the warranty, and this is the most important detail that fails with the flanges, this is the part you want to get right. So is this, when you're doing the gap training, mm -hmm. you get feedback from guys, you're hearing you know, builders giving us details all the time of where things have gone wrong with the repair jobs, etc. What is it that's these four here that, you know, okay, this is your traditional grade where, you know, you've got your, your lugs that you can just lay your drain in here. This, yep. is, a, this is the screw version. That's from yep. plastic, yep. I think. Yep. Um, the Wondercat one, where they've got they've got a unique uh, design, where it still in principle allows the water to drain down the edge, but also within the flange itself, it's got outlets. Yep. And this is the Stormtech one, which I know that you're a fan of because of the fact that it's it's adjustable mm -hmm. and it's um, ideal for strip drains. Yep, that's right. That's what it's designed for. And we're going to do a whole episode on strip drains, guys. So don't miss out because that one will be uh, showing how strip drains are sealed and waterproof in our system but just give me a qu quick briefing on this shandy like what is it about these that are the key things that any waterproof or contractor can can do because i mean whether, whether you want to use this one this one or this one the fact is the way you approach it is the same way that's right and and the thing that you'll notice about all of them that the features are the same like you mentioned they're installed flush um, and also, you know, they've all got this flange section, which allows for that um, the connection of the membrane. And and that's such the, an important point, the term, termination, which we'll yeah. go through on our method in a moment. Yeah, and also that they all allow the water to drain from underneath the tile bed. So, sorry, man. So as you mentioned, this one here, you just sit them in the lugs, and the water is able to hit that membrane and then transfer underneath that that grate. Uh, this one here with the twist top. Same thing, it's just got a really thick thread and that allows the water to travel and then drain out into the outlet. Yeah. So, you know, that's that's the common theme and they're sort of the points that you need to be thinking about when, when detailing and applying your waterproof membrane and ensuring that your puddle flange has been installed correctly and it's the right type. So I'm gonna play devil's advocate in a moment because we're gonna talk about over and under because I know there's someone out there or a few of you that are watching going, what about the over and under application? Mm. But our method of waterproofing with the grip set system, if this is a floor now, and the point I want to raise is, yeah, we've used timber here for the demonstration purposes, but it doesn't matter what this substrate is, whether it's concrete, cement sheet, sky on, uh, fiber reinforced, compressed, it's a wet area substrate, then the system that you are using, if you're using a grip set system, if you're using someone else's uh, system, they would have the detail on how you approach this area. Now, our method is, this is the most important junction because you've got, uh, basically you've created a joint between a plastic surface and the substrate, and that's a weak point. So we've always used our butyl squares where quite simply, we peel back the release paper, we lay that down, we can cut inside that flange area and we've immediately bridged that gap. That's the critical part. Now, if we are then doing an over and under screed system, oh, I might grab, I might grab this one. So this is our screed that we've laid. Same principle, okay. So the waterproofing now has been carried out underneath with our butyl square, our total system whether that's liquid or sheet. So if you're using the express lay system over the whole floor and then screening on top, we'd still use our butyl square around the flange. If you're using our PF system, if you're using our HD system or any of our liquids, the same principles apply for every part of grip set applications. So whether it's our 2P membrane, our grip set 38FC or our multi pro. Now on top of this, we just commence the application again. So Shannon, give us a, a rundown on it. Yep. So we'll go in with our butyl square, remove the release paper, seal that joint again, 
and then it's that continuous membrane into that paddle flange. And that's integrated, so around the yeah. perimeter you've got your elastic proof or your, your bit or tape, the BRW tape to seal the wall floor junctions and on top of the screed which we'd reinforce with the 11Y but it's completely sealed over and under and we attack the puddle flange the same way as far as the way we waterproof and seal it under and over, identical, there's no compromise, it's not like oh, we've got the butyl square underneath we'll just put a bit of silicon up here, no we do it the same way always, that's your guaranteed method and it gives everyone peace of mind that that joint there is bridged and it's reinforced and sealed immediately. No waiting around for drying, no waiting around for you know delays on how you're going to get your liquid on it, trying to push the envelope in terms of time. Our systems are all about time, but never at the compromise of the end job. And so this one here, whether you're using a screed on any of these systems, you've got to use the flange over and under. If you're going as an over under system, you've got to have a leak control flange under and over not one or the other, on both. And if you just leave that there for a sec, the other sure. thing that I like while I'm here, I'm a big fan of the screw top for this reason as well, because you can actually incorporate it. That's, yeah. that, that's, that's, that's the all tile the way, coming out. Yeah, but all that, the way down, yeah. and then you've got that continuous. And know, it's adjustable. Yeah, yeah without, without and cutting. then obviously, yeah. So Without compromising the strength. Yeah, and that's yeah. why that, that grade is popular. Yeah, and the only limitation really is the, the size of the thread. So if they're listening, someone's listening just make this longer <laughs> all right so let's get some key takeaways from this one Shandy yeah um, if anybody I mean obviously our gap contractors know this like the back of their hand because mm -hmm. it gets drilled into them and they always do it right but in terms of even builders that might be watching and they've got questions about this where can they come for information on this one well they can come to us um, and we'll go through all these details and then some um, if they have specific questions but also the manufacturers of the puddle flange themselves. Um, they have their own installation manuals. So every really control flange yep, supplier has yep. got their own detail. Yep, yep. So and you can contact them and, and you can ask them the question how, how to install their puddle flange. Some call for different adhesion methods. Um, and and they will the have way. their own manual or data sheets or fixing methods yep, on that. That's recommended. Right. Yep. And always start with the manufacturer's details. That's key. The thing you don't do is if you are a builder, just say to your plumber, Here's that, there's the bathroom, I've got the waterproofer coming in tomorrow, can you go and fix these? Don't do it, okay? If you're the waterproofer, most importantly, price it into your job. If you've got a concrete floor, understand that you might need a bit of time to bevel out and prepare that concrete, get it right, or you need to use a router if you're using it on a structural sheet flooring, that's what you grade. But whatever you're doing, don't just assume that the way the flange has been installed is going to allow you to do a job properly. This is the detail that counts. The water, the like I said before, the volume of water that hangs around these areas is at the most peaked time at any time a wet area is used, whether it's outside, external wet areas, or internal. And so it makes sense that you start from this is like the foundation of your waterproofing job. Get the waste correct first, then surface preparation, then priming, then our detailing system and then the waterproofing, as per always with our grip set systems. If you're using any other manufacturer's waterproofing system, the good ones out there know their stuff and they'll have a similar detail on how to address that. If they haven't, ask the question. Never assume. Shandy, thanks for joining on this one. Thank you. 1-800-650-435 if you need more details. Guys, don't forget, be part of that change. I'll see you next time.